uh, greetings and salutations to my fellow viewers. Uh, this is Group 10 and we are going to enlighten you on the theory on data communications. So let us proceed. Hi all, I'm Lin Huizeng. So before we move to the amplitude modulation, let's talk about what is modulation. So modulation is the process of converting data into a radio wave, like sine wave, by adding information to an electronic or optical carrier signal. So with that, a signal can be transformed to a format that's suitable for transmissions through a chosen medium. For example, the diagram given. So um, we have a signal from, uh, we have a message signal and we have a career signal. So after the modulation process, we eventually will get two combined signal with two identity, with combining two identity. So. The changes in the amplitude of the carrier signal is according to the instantaneous information signal VMT. Amplitude modulations is the changes in the amplitude of the carrier signal EC according to the instantaneous information signal, which we know as VMT. And now I'm going to explain about the general formula for amplitude modulations for ideal case, which phase is equal to zero. So. Um, from the diagram, we can notice that information signal uh, go through the amplitude modulator with current signal and we will produce a signal co-modulated signal which is VAMT. And please note that a very important note is frequency of carrier signal must larger than frequency of information signal. And uh, we note that there is a bracket EC plus VAMT that's actually known as the envelope equations for amplitude modulation signal. So now I'm going to talk about the frequency domain. Um, so the graph is very different than the previous one. So we can note that the x-axis of this graph is frequency. So um, by using the trigonometry principle, cos A cos B equals to 1 over 2 cos A plus B plus cos A minus B, when we rearrange it, we will get the final equations. So um, from the graph, you will notice that there is actually three axes. One is Fc, Fc minus Fm, and Fc plus Fm. And the width is actually 2Fm. So the upper sideband is signal is at the Fc plus Fm, and the lower sideband signal is at the Fc minus Fm. Hi, I'm Jingwen, and now I'm going to explain about angle modulation. Angle modulation also is known as exponential modulation. And angle modulation uses modulating signal to change the frequency and phase of the carrier signal. There are two types of angle modulation, which is phase modulation and frequency modulation. At the left side here is the phase modulation formula, and at the right side here is the frequency modulation formula. Now I'm going to explain more details about frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is an instantaneous change of the carrier frequency Fc by the information of modulating signal VMT while the carrier amplitude remains constant. From this diagram, you can see that the first one is the modulating signal, the second one is carrier waveform, and the last one is frequency modulated signal. Which means that Fc carrier frequency is maximum when the input signal is at its highest, while Fc is the minimum when the input signal is at its lowest. This slide shows the modulation. There are two types, which is the generation of Fm and generation of Pm. From the first diagram, we know that this is the generation of Fm and it requires integrator and Pm modulator. While for the generation of Pm, we require differentiator and Fm modulator to produce a Pm. The same concept is, we have modulation and we also have demodulation. There are also two types, which is the degeneration of Fm and degeneration of Pm. From the first diagram, we know that this is the degeneration of Fm and we require Pm demodulator and also differentiator. While we are doing degeneration or demodulation, we are using demodulator. For the degeneration of FM, we are require FM demodulator and also integrator. There are two types of frequency modulation. The first one is narrow band frequency modulation and BFN, and then the second one is the WBFN wide band frequency modulation. Now we are going to focus on MBFM first. This diagram shows the MBFM generation. For the MBFM, we are using Armstrong method, which is an indirect method, and the MBFM signal can be generated using phase modulator circuit as shown in the diagram. Next, we are going to talk about WBF and wide band frequency modulation generation. This diagram is the WBFM generation. Beyond MBFM modulator, we are adding frequency multiplier, mixer, and band pass filter to produce WBFM. The function of the frequency multiplier is to increase frequency deviation or modulation index. 
For the local oscillator is tuned and desired frequency with appropriate frequency range permitted by local oscillator frequency. And then the bandpass filter is filter the unwanted frequency and get the desired frequency component that we want. Now let's go into FM demodulation. FM demodulation is basically the conversion of FM to AM. This using AM demodulation circuit, which is the envelope detector that we learned from last chapter, to get back information signal. This technique is also known as slot detection or discriminator. This is the block diagram of FM demodulation, and this graph shows that from every stage to stage, what is the changes on the graph, and then from the YT, we will get back the AM, which is the modulating signal. Hello, my name is Anthony, and now I am going to present on a radio digital modulation. So basically, it is similar to the analog modulation in which the modulating signal will vary the amplitude, frequency or phase of the carrier signal. But the only difference is now that the modulating signal will be digital. So that means, uh, for example, for amplitude shift keying, we will see the amplitude shift in the carrier wave and it will be converted into digital binary data, either one or zero. And you can see the pattern as in the diagram. Same goes for frequency shift keying, where we'll see the changes of the frequency in the carrier wave and as well as phase shifting where we will see the changes of the phase in the carrier wave. So this is basically a very basic, simple concept to grasp. So if you guys noticed that the previous slide is only looking at a change for one bit, but now if we see multi-level shift keying, more than one bits can be represented by this thing called symbols, where it is a basic unit of transmission that represents a certain amount of information. And that baud rate is the number of symbol changes that occur per second. So this means that a higher baud rate of the signal would mean that there is a higher data transmission, so which is actually better than uh, the previous shift keying. So a beautiful type of uh, multi-level shift keying is quadrature phase shift keying, which is a QPSK. And if you notice here in this constellation diagram, it's a representation of QPSK where the changes of symbols are according to its angles. So for 45 degrees, it's 0, 0, then it changes to 0, 1, 135 degrees, and it changes to 225 when it's uh, 1, 1, and then finally 315 for 1, 0. And as you can see, the changes here are in two bits compared to the first slide where the changes of symbols are in one bit. So that means in theory, QPSK is a lot more efficient because the efficiency is double. There is two bits instead of one bit. So that means twice the data transmission and it's better. It's a better type of, of shift key. So that is all from me. I shall pass on to uh, Tae Boon Yang. Hi, I'm Tae Boon Yang. Today, I'm going to discuss about the visual advancement in communication field, which is Starlink. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation project operated by SpaceX, which is Elon Musk's aerospace company. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation company that provides satellite internet coverage to over 65 countries. Starlink aims to provide high-speed, low-latency internet access to the underserved and remote areas around the world. The constellation consists of thousands of small satellites in low Earth orbit that working together to create a network that brings internet connectivity to receivers on the ground. Impact and benefits of Starlink to society First is global connectivity. One of the primary goals of Starlink is to bring internet access to areas with limited or no access to traditional broadband services due to geographic, economic or infrastructure limitations. This can empower society with educational resources, healthcare information, economic opportunities and access to global markets. Next is disaster relief and emergency services. In areas affected by natural disasters or emergencies, where traditional communication infrastructure might be compromised, Starlink can provide vital connectivity for coordination, skill operations, and communication. Third is scientific research and education. Improved internet access can benefit scientific research by enabling remote sensing, data collection, and collaboration among researchers worldwide. It can also enhance education opportunity for students in remote areas. And lastly is commercial applications. Enhanced connectivity can facilitate businesses efficiently in remote areas by enabling smarter transactions, better communication and access to online markets and services. Misconceptions on Starlink. First is space debris and collection risk. As a misconception regarding the increased risk of space debris due to the large number of satellites in the Starlink constellation. However, SpaceX has implemented collection avoidance systems and actively managed the satellite's orbit to reduce the chances of collisions. Second is health concern about the satellite emissions. Certain satellites are operated in low Earth orbit, 
So the sentence emitted by this sentence are very good. Current scientific understanding and studies on low-level electromagnetic radiation exposure haven't provided conclusive evidence of significant harm to human health. That's all from our group. Thank you for listening.